Today I'm going to show you how to make a maze in Blender using geometry nodes and Python. This is more of an intermediate tutorial, so I'm not going to be showing you every button that I press, but I am going to try and go into enough detail so that you can replicate what I've done. I'll put a link in the description with the finished project as well as links to the assets I used. Start by making a grid by subdividing a plane. This will be the maze. Then model a wall along the x-axis, making sure that its origin is at the center of its base. For simplicity, I made my wall one blender unit long. Then make a pillar to hide the connection point between walls, making sure that its origin is at its bottom. I shaded my wall and pillar using a material from Ambient CG. Add the wall to a collection called walls and the pillar to a collection called pillars. At this point, if you'd like, you can make more walls and pillars for extra variation in your maze. Now add a geometry nodes modifier to your grid and create a node tree titled maze. Check the fake user button to ensure the data block is saved even when no objects are actively using it. Now replicate the node group that is currently on screen. The pillars section places pillars on all of the vertices of the maze, rotating them to match the normals of those vertices. The walls section creates walls on all of the edges that are marked with a closed attribute, rotating them to match the angle of the edges and stretching them along the x-axis to match the length of the edges. If your walls have a length other than one, add a divide node in between the capture attribute and the combined xyz nodes to divide the value by the length of your walls. Finally, combine the walls, pillars and original geometry of the maze with the join geometry node and output that. I now shaded my maze using another material from Ambient CG. In the Render Properties tab, I switched the feature set to Experimental, and I added a Subdivision Surface modifier. With Adaptive Subdivision checked, this gave me enough geometry on the ground to use the displacement map that came with the material. Now open up the text editor, add a script, call it maze.py. This will be the script that generates the maze. Once it's finished, we'll be able to select an object, run the script, and a maze will appear on that object. Start by importing BPY, BMesh, and Random, as they'll all be used in the script. Store the active object in a variable, and make sure that it's a mesh. If it isn't a mesh, we'll raise an exception, because the rest of the script is not prepared to deal with an object that is not a mesh. Now we'll check that the maze has a geometry nodes modifier, with the maze node group that we created earlier attached. If it doesn't, we'll add a geometry nodes modifier, attach the maze node group, and then move it to the top above any other modifiers. Then we'll get the mesh from the active object, convert it to a bmesh that's easier to work with, and ensure that it has the closed attribute. If it doesn't have the closed attribute, we'll add the closed attribute, which will be a boolean attribute attached to the edges of the mesh. This attribute represents the walls of the maze. If it's true, there'll be a wall there, and if it's false, there won't be. The algorithm we're going to use to generate this maze is called Depth First Search. It'll start with a fully blocked off maze and carve out a path until all reachable cells have been explored. So we'll start by closing off all of the edges, and then we'll pick a cell to start from. We'll then keep looping until the entire maze has been carved out. Every iteration, we'll take the current cell and get a list of all the neighbours that haven't been visited yet. If there are any, we'll pick one at random to visit, and open up all the edges connecting the current cell and the chosen neighbour. It might seem like there should only be one edge connecting the current cell and the chosen neighbour, but keep in mind that Blender allows us to use n-gons, which can have multiple edges, connecting them to another n-gon. In these cases, we'll open all of those edges. Finally, once we're finished iterating, we'll update the mesh so that the geometry nodes modifier knows that we've changed it, and we can see the result immediately. Now we can select our maze and click Run Script. I then added a camera, some lights, a HDRI that I got from Polyhaven, I set up my render settings, and then did some compositing until I had a result I was happy with. While this should work for any mesh, your mileage may vary if there are sharp turns in the mesh, as this may create gaps. You'll get better results if all of the edges in the mesh are of a roughly equal length. This will also only work properly on meshes with only one mesh island. If there are disconnected portions of the mesh, then the start cell will be unable to carve out a path to the other portions. For the meshes that this does work on, this should create a fully functioning maze. Every cell will be accessible by every other cell, so you could place a start and an end anywhere within the maze, or anywhere on the boundary of the mesh, if the mesh has one. As well as grids, you could also use circles, spheres, donuts, or try remeshing a more complex mesh to get roughly even length edges and apply a smoothing modifier to reduce gaps at sharp edges. By replacing the wall and pillar with different meshes, with different materials, you could make different types of mazes. Here's one made out of fences, and here's one designed to look a bit more like a dungeon. If you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to see more like it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, 
or recommendations of videos you'd like to see on this channel, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.